Hello, brothers and sisters. We knelt down to pray for all our people that died, for all our people that left us untimely because of the word declared unto us by Cameroon. I call on all of all, all of us, everyone, we pray that may their souls rest in perfect peace. That may the souls of all Amazonian people killed by the BS regime rest in peace. We remember our fallen heroes. We stand today together to remind ourselves why we are in this. To remind ourselves again a duty we have to do to our people. To remind ourselves to air is human, to forgive is divine. To stand together as a people that have suffered, that have been bleeding by the occupation power. By La Republic, the illegal occupation. I am of our land. To see how we found ourselves where we are today. To chart a way forward to continue to collaborate genuinely. To see collaboration as a duty. No one should be called for collaboration. You should use yourself, use your mind to come for collaboration. And that is how unity will come. Fellow brothers and sisters, fellow Amazonians, let us look more on the bigger image. Let us look more on the way forward. Let us look more on our freedom. Let us look less on our shortcomings. Let us look less on our differences. Let us keep collaboration as a priority. I beg Mama and Papa Dave, Fellow brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow compatriots, we have gone a long way that nothing can stop us. We have gone a long way that we cannot allow our grudges to hold us back. Look, if we can have some kind of sorrow, the pain, the agony, the torture, we could think on our people. Diasporas, think about the IDPs. Diasporas, think about our people in the refugee camps. Have you ever visited any refugee camp? Have you visited our people in the bushes? Think about our brothers and sisters giving their life to fight for our freedom. Therefore, people like me and you, I am not even kneeling down. I kneel down because the pain of our people is too much. I kneel down because the blood of our people is too much. It's a sign of respect to everyone. I thank all of you that you are standing no matter what. You are not giving up. I thank all of you no matter whatever the enemy is doing. No matter how the enemy is trying his way out. You are not giving up. You continually stand so tall. You continue to say, La Republic has killed our people from 1960, 1961 to this time, 2020. Right from the time Imamura to 1961, our people have been dying. After the Nsabulu Fuman Conference, they still kill our people that have resisted. 1997, 1997, they still kill our people. Amas. They have been killing, upon killings, upon killings, undocumented, before we started documenting in the 2000s. When you think about the blood of our people gone, you will see no barriers in front of us to come together. You will see no reason why people go on TV and ban others. You will see no reason why people call soldiers in Gazero to give little money, not to bleed the occupier from our land. You will see no reason why people even call fighters and corrupt to kill others. You will see no reason what happened in Bui would have never ever even dreamed to happen. What happened La Republic did to Donga Bantu wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. And every time they will have to collaborate with some of our elites, the people who, who pretend to stand with our communities. And the, the enemy uses them to batter and kill our people. These are heartless humans. These are not human beings. These are demons. 
Satan, serpents, vipers, and pythons. Amazonian people, we are different. Amazonian people, yes, we are different. I want to thank all of you that are here today. We have one hour of this press. One hour because I have a meeting coming 6 p.m. And then after that, another meeting. We shall come back in the evening. We have a talk show tomorrow. We have another one on Friday. We will not stop. We will not blink. We will not look back. It is time for us to build our national cohesion. Build our national integrity. Come together as people that have bled it. People that have suffered. People that are moving in the blood of their own people. Because we, it was not our fault. Because we did not declare war unto us. I call all, all of us. I call everyone. To remember. To remember how far we have gone. Remember how we found ourselves to where we are today. You know the war was declared on our people. You know our people had peace plans and Bibles in their hands. You know our people never carried even a knife or a machete. You know our people had no weapon, not even a stick in their hand. But you know what was declared unto them. You know that's a fact. You know it's the right thing to do what we are doing now. But you know that we did not create self-defense. You know we did not create self-determination. You know somewhere we read in the international human rights. Self-defense is a right to all humans, including you and me. You know that's a, that's a truth. You know that's a fact. You know we are only doing defense. We are defending. You know if the Republic don't have the army of occupation, we have nothing to defend. You know that we are not in any way aggressive. We are not an aggressor. We are defending. That's why America stands with us. That's why the great countries on earth are standing with us. And I want to thank all of you people today. The bishops of South Africa wrote a letter to the tyrant regime in their wounded, calling them to cease fire. Calling them to respect the international uh, audacity of ceasefire. But you know how devilish, how satanic, how evil the Republic of Cameroon is. You know they will never bow. About two, three years ago, the Vatican gave a peace plan to them. About two, three years ago, the Vatican wrote and tell Popia to come and dialogue. Listen to the bishops. That the bishops are the ministers of the church, wherever they are. You know Popia will take a peace plan from the Vatican and put in trash. We all saw the peace plan that the Pope gave him. When he went to corrupt the Pope, to warn the bishops, the Pope instead gave him a peace plan. Fellow brothers and sisters, when we look at all these things, the reason why we continue to say, listen, we have to build a stronger self-defense force. We have to come together to commit in order to push the occupation out. You must understand that the world is not talking because of what our forces of self-defense have been doing. If we have put our hands together and continue to only hold peace plans and Bible, then God will remind us the story of David and Goliath. David did not only pray and pray and hold peace plans and Bible, but has used a bow and arrow to strike Goliath and kill Goliath. We all understand the story of Moses and the Israelites. When Moses saw a, a, an Egyptian killing an Israelite, what Moses did? Moses killed and buried in the sand. We all know Moses used a staff, a material, a staff, a physical material to hit the water and divide the water into two and the people pass across. To, for every struggle and every revolution, God has given a mysterious object for people to use. During the days of the Palestine, the God chosen people, Israelite, there was a covenant, the pack. God gave that a sacred place for, to safeguard the children where people go to pray. In Ambazonia, I don't know, it could be the Odeshi that our children are having today. It could be the Odeshi. It could be because Satan has never created anything on earth. Do not make Satan to be very significant. Satan cannot create anything. Satan only destroy. Satan only asks you to go kill your own children. Satan only asks you to go and give little money for your own brothers to fight themselves. Satan cannot create. He destroy. God created everything. What African people must understand is that those who do not understand what the type of gift God gave African people, they start to sabotage it, to be like, it's witchcraft, it's this. But actually in their own way, there is no witchcraft existing abroad. In the Western world, they have no witchcraft. But you African people gifted with gold, diamond, everything. Everything about you will be witchcraft except your diamond. Except your gold. Except your natural resources. Except your petroleum. Everything about you is, is witchcraft. Even your polygamy is witchcraft. The same people who brought you homosexuality, lesbianism, gay, which I have no problem about those, their beliefs. 
but they will tell you that polygamy is a crime. How we are, how did this happen? If you think now that all those things are wrong, you now see the reason why we say Pobia and Yawunde, who take order from the same West, are wrong. So I call each and every one, fellow brothers and sisters, let us come together, reason, think, have a befitting National Day that is coming up. Celebrate as one Amazonia. Let us shame the world, shame the army of divide and rule that we are now educated people. And we are now emancipated from mental slavery. And besides that, I want to thank all of you that are here. Thank you for sharing. We have only left 40 minutes to go. Thank you so much. God bless you and you are welcome. This is Liberation TV. I knelt down for us to pray for our fallen and to pray for mercy upon all of us that are still alive today. And we remind ourselves too that, to, that all of us on earth, we shall all die. No matter whether you are fighting or you are not fighting, we shall all die. No one on earth can, can be immortal. Everyone will die. And now the question is, what legacy do you leave behind when you die? What legacy are you going to leave behind when you die and you are gone, rest in peace? What legacy? What will people remind, remember about you? What will remind the people when they think about you when you are gone in the journey before us? That is why Amazonian people, we must leave a legacy. The legacy we are leaving is that our own children will never live to fight and fight again this war. That our own children will never live again to be slaves. That our own children will have good education system. That our own children and next generation will have quality judiciary system where justice is served and not fraudulent activities. Where justice is served and not discrimination, nepotism, tribalism, favoritism, discrimination will not happen. Where our women will have equal pay at their jobs. Where our women, ladies and girls will be treated fair just as they treat their female, uh, males and boys and gentlemen. So our women will be respected the same way men are respected. Our women will be in leadership position. Our children will all be equally treated. That the industries and jobs and the corporations will give equal employment and equal pay. That in our society, there will be peace. That in our society, there will be breakthrough. That in our communities, there will be development. That in our country, your voice must be heard. That in our nation, you have the right to protest. That in our nation, you have right to gather. That in our nation, you have right to practice what please you based on your beliefs, on your ethnicity, on your cultural background, on your tradition, on your religion, on your economic policies. That the nation will help to develop economic policies that serve the people and not serving those in the regime. Is that our politicians will work for the people and not work for their offices and their bosses. That there will be never a hand clapping in our country where people go and sit in a political party to clap hands. That everyone must be honest in their factions. That you will not ship clap hands in your factions and lead your faction to a CVDM. That in Amazonia the truth and nothing but the truth will serve the people. That is why we are where we are today. That is why we are standing and holding our grass and praising our children that have decided not to play politics, but to hold their arms and defend our women and children, defend our communities, defend our civilian population that are innocent. We held them. Fellow brothers and sisters, what, is, what are you doing on your own? What is your commitment? What have you done at your own level? Are you committed? What is your devotion? Yes, you are married to a francophone. Yes, you are working for a French company. But people are donating an anonymous. People are donating as ghosts. If we can be ghosts in the media, we can also ghost and donate. People are doing that. You are not doing it for a leader. You are doing it for ground zero. You are not doing it for a leader. You are doing it for our forces on the ground. You are not doing it for a faction or a group because you want homeland freed. That is why we are here. 
Fellow brothers and sisters, I will remind you a story. Before I remind you a story, we have 35 minutes left. Share and invite. Share and invite so that we can break this story together. By the way, the ADF, the People's Army, is not capable of doing and undoing. The ADF Amori, the National Amori, of course, which is your Amori, has created a series of so many, so many improvised ways to deal with the enemy. This is a breaking news. Also, the bishops in South Africa wrote a letter asking Cameroon to back out of Amazonia. They wrote a letter asking Cameroon to cease fire. We are only defenders. We are not aggressors. We do not declare war. You do not cease fire if you don't declare. Logically, you are the one coming to kill. If you don't come, we, Amazonia don't have any defense, anything to defend. You don't cease fire. To, you don't, what fire are you having? You are only defending, like, don't come, don't come, don't come. If somebody don't come, you will not put your hands like this. This is to all of us Amazonian people that don't understand the grammar. The one who declare war cease fire because we don't have anything. We we not aggressive. We are defendants. And so I thank all of you people. Please pay, share to all your blogs, to all your WhatsApp, to all your media forums so that we can now share the story that is coming up. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. And this is Liberation TV again with yours, Major General Vela, doubling as your national uh, deputy chairman for our Independence Day celebration. Thank you and God bless you. So much fellow brothers and sisters the question i ask today is what have you done what have you done on your own path it's a question that is for all of us what have we done sing them over again to me Wonderful what have you done for your community? What are you doing for your blocks? Have you committed? I want to tell you again the story of the rich man and the poor man. The story of the rich man and the poor man. As we have seen in the book of God. There was once a poor man and a rich man. The poor man Lazarus. And the rich man. The rich man was not the cause of the poor man's homelessness. The poor man was homeless, sick, inflamed, sore coming out from his body. Life was life for the poor man was like useless. The poor man was sick, broke, no way to stay, nothing to eat, no water to drink, no medication. But there was a rich man who passed by every day. And this poor man was in front of the rich man's house. The rich man lived in the mansion. The rich man lived in the mansion. The rich man probably drive, drove a very good car, dressed in good fabrics, good clothing, wearing good clothes, and eat a lot, eat very well with the family and the children. The rich man threw a lot of leftover food 
nothing was ever given to the poor man. The poor man got sick. And there was no medication. No medication. So the poor man eventually died. The poor man got sick, no medication, no one to take care of him. The poor man eventually died. Poor Lazarus died. But the rich man who was passing every day was seeing poor Lazarus. And he has just a little amount of money from his uh, bank account could have helped the case. But the rich man did not act with his conscience that God has given all of us. So poor man got sick and then eventually died. But one thing we are told, we are not told, is if the rich man was the cause of the poor man's misfortune. No, the rich man was not the cause. But what we are going to hear today is every one of us have a conscience. You have a conscience given to you by God. So the, rich, the poor man got sick eventually. He might have been attacked by armed robbers. It could also be that the poor man was a thief, was an armed robber and was beaten. It could still be the case. Because we are not told what made the, rich, the poor man to be poor. What made the poor man to be homeless? We are not told. The poor man may have been a bad man. Might be. But he served his punishment on earth. But God has said, when you see somebody suffering, you use your conscience, you're supposed to help. Because it said, He who put his hands on the floor and keep looking back is not worthy of me. If you want to enter into life, sell all you have and give the money to the poor and follow me. What does that mean? When you see a man, a needy person, like Amazonian soldiers today, like Amazonian self-defendants today, like our people suffering in refugee camps and suffering in IDPs and many in jail, you already know. What have you done? All of us that are moving free today, you don't need to have billions. You are all rich. You are rich because you are a free person. You are rich because you are not sick. You are rich because you are healthy. A healthy man is a rich man. What are you doing for your own people? What are you doing for your people that are suffering, that need help, that need people like you? What are you doing on your own part? The question of a rich man in the Bible who did not take care of the poor man is a question that God is asking you and me. The Bible did not say the rich man was rich because he had billions, he had trillions, he has cars. The Bible says he was rich. It could be that he has 50,000, 100,000, 10,000, 1,000. But the poor man has nothing. It could be that he has $100. The poor man has zero. That means he was richer than the poor man. It could even be that he had 10. And the rich man, the poor man has zero. I mean, you have 10, you are richer than the one. And you can break a 20 or a little bit or even 10% or even 1% and help somebody. Are you doing that? We hear all these stories and we curse the poor man. Today you are the rich man. We hear all the stories and we are like, oh, if I was that rich man, I could have done that. But you have $1,000 in your account. You have not had a single IDP. You have not had a single uh, a Ground Zero soldier. You have not had your village. You have not had your community. You, are not, you have not had any refugee. You have not had any person in the prison. That is how it is today, related to our lives. So the, the poor man died eventually and then he went to. The poor man died and God took him. Maybe God considered because he has served his prison on earth. We don't know how God thought. But because the poor man suffered, God took him to heaven, to paradise. Then the rich man, like any of us today who are not incarcerated, who are not uh, killed, who are still alive, live his lavish life on earth with his wife and children. Because everyone must die. Whether you are holy or not, whether you are a pope or not, whether you are a bishop or not, whether you are a herbalist or a traditionalist, everyone must die. No one is immortal. We shall all die. So the rich man lived a lavish life, but money could not buy life. So he died. So he died. 
And when the rich man died, he went to heaven and God said, remember, you live a very good life on earth. You did not take care of the poor. You did not take care of the sick. You did not take care of people who are suffering who need the people at the most. You did not use your conscience that I gave you to use. You did not. I bless you to be rich. But then you did not use your conscience on earth. And God threw the poor man to hellfire. Now, this is one thing I want all, all of us to also understand. So when the rich man went to hell, he was burning every day and night, like we are told in the stories, in the doctrine, that in hellfire is fire, fire burning people day and night. So he was burning down and burning and burning to ashes. And uh, he pleaded to God. To, uh, and then he was looking close to Father Abraham. And the story is told, Father Abraham is in heaven. And he looked, beside Father Abraham was the poor man Lazarus sitting. The poor man was sitting in paradise close to father abraham and the rich man in hellfire burning down was thirsty very thirsty because in hell that's why they put you there for you to suffer you to suffer and suffer he was thirsty and so he called for father abraham to send the poor man lazaro just to dip his finger to dip his finger into water and let it drop in his tongue. Father Abraham, I am begging you now. I am begging you now. Send Lazaro to give me some water. I am thirsty. Like we were told during the doctrine by the catechists. And so the rich man asked Father Abraham, please, can you send uh, poor man Lazaro? Just to dip his hand into water and let it drop on his tongue. And Father Abraham told him, Remember when you live your lavish life on earth. This is a poor man that used to sit in front of your house. He was inflamed. He was sick. He was a homeless person. had nothing to eat. He had swollen body. And his body was full of sour and pearls coming out of his body. And under the docks were licking his wounds. And only the dogs we are licking his wounds. Remember, you live such a lavish life that you could take care of him, but you didn't. And then he cried and cried for help. And Father Abraham said, Listen, you reap what you sow. You can only harvest mangoes if you plant mangoes, in on other words. You can only harvest tomatoes if you plant tomatoes, in other words. Say, what you have now is what you did, what you deserve, is what your lifestyle on earth. The rich man said, please, Father Abraham, can you send the angels or Lazarus to go back on earth and teach my brothers and sisters, my children, to be nice so that they will go to paradise? And Father Abraham said, everyone on earth has their conscience and everyone will be judged individually. Meaning that you will be judged separate from your wife. Your wife will be judged separate from you. And your children will be joined separate from you, and you will be joined separate from your children. Your crime are not your children's crime. Your wife's crime is not your crime. Your husband's crime is not your crime. Your children's crime is not your crime. And your crime is not your children's crime. God is a God of merciful and compassion. The God of today is the most compassionate one. For the crimes that God has punished the people back in, in the years, God today is a God of merciful and compassion. And so everyone will be held responsible for what we do on earth because we have conscience. So that is why I ask you fellow Amazonians, are you the rich man in the Bible who don't care about the suffering people of Amazonia? Do you care about the IDPs? Do you care about the families of the foreign heroes? The foreign heroes, our heroes that are fallen. Do you care about their children they left behind? Do you care about the children of Samsoya? Do you care about the people being tormented as a result of this struggle? What have you done to our IDs? What have you done to our refugees everywhere, especially in Nigeria, Ghana, and so on and so forth? What have you done to our people in the bushes and in forests? What have you done to Grand Zero fighters that are defending our communities? What have you done to our people, our prisoners? What have you done to all our people that are suffering, that are in need? 
Sometimes some of us say we want to help those in Dubai, especially the girls that are below the age of 21, have no jobs, have no way to stay, and they'll have money even for their feminine uh, uh, product. It's not because we have. Because it's a duty to do to your own people. It is a duty to help. Everyone is a humanitarian. We are told God gave everyone a conscience. We are told all of us have conscience. That means everyone is a humanitarian. Where is the humanitarian part of you? We are told we are bound to be humanitarians because God himself is a humanitarian. That's why he created humans, by the way. <laughs> the biggest humanitarian on earth is the one that created humans. And each and every one of us have been given that peace in our mind called the conscience that we are all humanitarians. The ADF people have no choice when they create the national armor. Because we have to create no bow and arrows to defend ourselves against the Goliath. It is the right thing to do. David did in the Bible. So, which part have you chosen to be the rich man and go to hell tomorrow? Or to be the poor man today like Amazonian people suffering? You go to heaven. We have already suffered. We are poor Lazarus. But what part me and you that are free are playing today? Can determine whether you will be the rich man that will go to hell or go to hell. And it doesn't mean that you should have millions. We are told, we are told the story of a poor widow. People were coming to church and giving a lot of money, raising big envelopes out and putting in the baskets. And the poor widow, and somebody will put big money and say, Look at me, I pay my tithes. I give a lot of money to God. Not that poor one there, not that poor. Poor widow there who cannot even put anything in the basket. And the poor widow come and say, Look, God, I have only this penny. This is all I have, Lord. I have only this penny I don't have. God, I don't have wealth. But all that I have, I give from my heart. The Lord turns around and says, What? This widow is the one that has given the best offering on earth because she gives just what she has. It's what she had. All of you are giving 10% wow on a big envelope. It is not even up to anything that you have. And you are all her Pharisees and tax collectors and Sadducees. You give your own and then you look at the poor one and say he doesn't have and cannot. But the poor one give one penny from the heart. Fellow brothers and sisters, my fellow brethren, what have we done since this struggle started from your household? What has your own house would done for this struggle for the suffering people of amazonia i know people that are not active in social media at all they look for me and all they do was to ask me to create a way for them to help the struggle i know people who ask me how can i do tough can you help me to commit to tough and then i will help them to do this some people who came to me and say look i have this credit card i want you to use i am an old person i cannot know how to use the technology let me give you the number and the CD code of my credit card. Let you give $100 to the top every month. I have helped more than 5 to 10 people in this way. What are you doing as your own part to help others to succeed? To help the nation to succeed? To help the nation to have justice? What are you doing on your own part? Remember the story of the rich man and the poor man. What position have you chosen? I want to thank all of you people for sharing and inviting. This is a food for thought for all of us. That's why some of us risk our life, not because showcasing, we could be showcasing in Sydney, in Australia, Dubai, moving in great big cities and showcasing life. If it means to showcase by helping your own people, even if that is a crime, even God, the God of merciful and compassion, we understand with you that somebody will take a vacation and go to Brazil or go to Canada or go to Australia or UK to enjoy life. Don't be afraid to go to help our people and showcase it. God will understand you than other people. Yes, you might be punished, but your crimes are not going to be like the one who take money to go spend in Switzerland. Don't be afraid of what people will say when you go to help the people. I know you are scared you're going to be killed. Do it from your heart. I have break the fence and the shackle. Go on to see our people. Come back. Even people who want, who have been paid to kill me, 
give them food to eat, give them small money in their pockets. But there are people who pay to kill you. Because God is a God of merciful and compassion. Because when you believe in the rightful way, you are safe. The problem we have is we worship Satan. We are scared of Satan. Well, we don't want to do this because Satan we see it. Oh, we don't want to do this because Satan we take this. Because we worship Satan. Plain daylight. If you have confidence in the one you serve, in the God you serve, you will not be scared of Satan. And so, fellow Amazonian, thank you so much. God bless you. Let's share and invite as I show you what the ADF is capable of doing and undoing now. We pray that our people continue to use their natural mindset to determine what is right from what is good. To, to determine what is right from what is wrong. To refute what is wrong. To deny all the manipulation. To deny all the deception. That our people may use their conscience in a proper way. As we are going to leave the talk show for today, that one thing we learn is that we should use our conscience. That we should stand with our people with our conscience. That anyone who gives money to manipulate or make a conspiracy to kill another one is the wicked people. We pray that our people, consciences, should be awakened. We pray that emancipating ourselves from mental slavery should continue to be the only way out. That anything that we do, we should always, always, and every time know that we are saving humanity. And as we go today, fellow brothers and sisters, we should remind ourselves in our various groups, our various factions, that we are saving our people and that the voices of our people count. We should again remind ourselves, all the surrogates, all the activists, that we are not hand clappers, that we are not a CPDM style, that what is not right is not right, and what is wrong is wrong, and what is right is right. That we should know that if we make a mistake, we shall create monsters. We shall create dictators. And so anything we do, that should not wipe from our mind. Last but not the least, brethren, we should remind ourselves on the occasion of our leader, Seseku Ayuk Tabi. Mr. Ayuk Tabi was a great man when he was still a freed man. He was capable of maneuvering and moving his organization in a proper way for the struggle. Could not be the best for some people because of different in political ideology or in the vision. Some people believe in self-defense, he believed in diplomacy. But he was able to keep his people who believe in diplomacy intact. What happened when he was kidnapped by La Republic? Everything went in a mist, a ramshackled. Because no one could have been able to maneuver and move his organization the way he did. That is a lesson to all of us in our various factions. We have got leaders that we trust so much. We have got leaders handling, in those leaders, got people handling various projects in a very good way. But anything nasty can happen at every time. And so we might trust our leaders, which is 100% true and honest. We don't want to ask accountability because we trust leaders don't steal, which is true. It's a fact. But what happens if the like, Republic in one way or the other take away that leader and a monster replace that leader? Therefore, I call each and every one to put fact checks and balance to be a must in all organizations where we are. It is something that cannot compromise. And if the leadership is very honest, they will not be afraid when accountability is asked. It is not going to be negative for the revolution. La Republic know that we are doing it. La Republic know we are contributing. La Republic know we have our websites. They know. Some of them, they even come to donate to see those websites. We are aware we are not idiots. La Republic know that we have ADF. They know we are funding. They know we are committing in tough. It is in all our bloggers' front pages. They know. They see it, donate to TTOA, donate. And you tell us that we will come to our account and then the enemy will see that. Then we are short-sighted and we don't even know where we are going to. To all the members 
to all the members of the factions, you serve the people. Our leadership has given themselves for the people. You do not come to serve leadership. You come to join the leadership to serve the people. I call everyone, wherever you are, we cry about my trip to Buya. Swindon. Some people are already crying about draft. Gone. Some are crying about some dark forces. Remember, if we don't take care, some people will cry about us. What is the difference between us? Do the right thing. For everything we say against my trip to Boya, we must put it in action. It is not either you like me or I love you. It's not either you will like our leader or we love our leader. It is doing the right thing for our people. That is why the talk show tomorrow is very important. Series of meetings will be held today. And what comes out of those meetings will determine what Mandela's spokesman today will tell you tomorrow. We are not hand clappers. We want things to be done the right way. Because if anything happened to our great leader, we don't want a monster to take over and ramshackle what he has built. Our leader, Dr. Cho Ayaba, has a vision. He has put that vision in a very great speed that we are so happy today. Protection, defense, and security to that vision remains the paramount. And you cannot do that if you are a hand clapper. You cannot do that if you are a sheep. You cannot do that if you are not a Mandela. People are going to hate you. In fact, at one point, people will call the leader to say, this person is bad. But because we serve the, the Amazonian people, our leader did not say, come and save me. Say, we serve the Amazonian people. What is good for Amazonian people is good for the leadership. What is good for the Amazonian people is good for us. And therefore, we serve the people who do not serve our factions. That is the difference between AGOFC, difference between ADF and other people that exist and CPDM type of alliances that we see in the revolution. CPDM type of surrogates that people will go and create a blue and white army not to prosecute the revolution and help their group to grow but to go and fight other groups. We have shamed that and said that is not the Mandela spirit. That when we go to a group is to make sure that that institution vision is served and make sure that vision delivers. We do not in any way surrogate for individual, for people, for humans. We surrogate for the nation, for the flag. That is why the Agovzi remains one of the most paramount group that we have today. If there was any group that was the best, the Mandelas would be standing but for that group. Because Mandelas are a group that facts, checks, balance, and make sure that democratic principles are followed. If you tell me you will do this, then you must do it. If you tell me, give me my trip to Boya, and I will take you to Boya in three months or three weeks. If it doesn't happen, the Mandelas will never keep quiet. A promise is a debt. We do not build with a go, a go, a go. CPDM is the master of that. The talk show tomorrow is so great that everyone come and listen. It would be a good news if everything is done properly. If not, you will hear what no one in any group can do. Because we want to get it right. We want that leadership, that, that roadmap, that vision not to be entangled by any way or the other. Either by submission or omission. Either by commission or by our egoism. Or by our ethnocentrism. Sometimes you love the leader and you kill the leader by some kind of love that you exaggerate. We don't do that. Rational. Everything we do must. The love for leadership must be rational. The love for leadership must be product, productive and proactive. You will not love the leader in a way that you can destroy. That is security. That is surety. That is uh, protection. And that is defense. That whether we do whatever we do to leaderships, that love should not be destructive. Like the, look at, people say that Paul Atanganji, Paul loves CPDA. But you see, the, the love of Paul Atanganji is the one that have destroyed Cameroon and CPDA. The Mafanis are people who are so loyal to their ritualistic CPDA. So much loyal. But look at the, what the loyalty has done. Tilapia, Echa, Isa, Cheroma, say Paul Bia is a blanket. He's a son of the Republic. Look at the type of love. Look at what that type of love has done to CPDM and Paul Bia. Paul Bia cannot speak today because he sort of gets went out. Instead of serving the nation, they went to serve the group and serve Paul Bia. So this is a caution to everyone. When you go out to serve on the leader and not the, the nation, the love is self-destructive. Sometimes you cor correct the leader and the leader will not even like. But the leader doesn't understand. In years to come, the leader understands what you were saying. Today, 
Today, we have the TV and we value the TV. And two, three years ago, we didn't value that because it was not a good thing we thought. And so this is a food for thought that if we reconsider TV today, it means that when you want to do the right thing, just do it. Just like I said, a polygamous TV of SCBC is going to cause problems. I know it is a fact. Whether you accept with me today or you don't accept with me. Tomorrow you will understand that the money wasted could have been used to create something that will last everlasting. I said that without water in my mouth. Because that is the Mandela spirit. You tell your leader exactly as it is. You do not want to, to lie your leader like Paul Atanganji and the Ngole are lying to Paul Bia that things are moving when things are not moving. Something about the pigs that is nice is they know how to collect money. If the institution that, pro that persecute this war can learn how to collect money like the pigs and use it properly is the best thing. I hate the pigs. I don't like what they do. They are thieves. They are embezzlers. One thing I love about the pigs, they know how to collect. Whether you like it or not, they are collecting. You can make yourself comfortable that they are not collecting. Deceive yourself. They are collecting. That's why they are embezzlers. That's why they are thieves. And that's why they are pigs. They collect and they put in their stomach. We can't be hypocrites. They are collecting. They collected more than 1 million, 1.3 million in my trip to Buya. Don't make yourself comfortable that they are not collecting because of the small 50,000 you have. They are collecting. If we can learn to collect like the pigs and thieves and make it properly like we are doing, Ambazonia could have been freed. Let us, um, let us understand that the enemy might have something very important that we might tap and use to free our homeland. One thing about the Republic of Cameroon is that we did not discover they had the military. They had the military. And some people were thinking that you will win Cameroon without the armed force, without the self-defense. After 58 years, we discovered that the Cameroon has something very important that we must accept, the power of the military. From the time we stopped deceiving ourselves, that the military force is not going to help. Look at where we are today. From the time we, en we, we, we engage in self-defense and accept the military power and accept self-defense and create ADF, we have gone a long way. We might head La Republic to Cameroon, but we learn from Cameroon that self-defense and arm is the way forward. Can somebody shout hallelujah for this preaching? We might head Cameroon, but one thing we learn from Cameroon, guns and bullets is the way forward. We might hate Cameroon, of course, we all hate Cameroon. We all don't like Cameroon. But what we are doing today to defend is to pick up arms and bullets. The same thing Cameroon used to subjugate us to slaves. So I hate Cameroon. Yes, can I cancel the fact that guns and bullets is the right way? No! I don't like the pigs. I hate them. But they know how to collect money. It's the truth. You can make yourself, deceive yourself that they are not collecting. They are collecting. And they are embezzlers. They are thieves. That's the difference. What the pigs have collected, if you have given an ADF, how oh, Ambazonia could have been freed. It's a fact. It is a fact. You can deny it and make yourself comfortable. I am not going to accept such facts. So whenever people say, the pigs collect money using this, and somebody go to block it, you are evil to yourself. You are evil to yourself. Indirectly, you don't know what you are doing. Come on. If you cry that the pigs are taking money and people are giving money and you do not want to open yourself to understand how the pigs are collecting, you are the problem. Do not kill the vision by your blind surrogacy. Dr. Cho Ayaba and AGF AGFC has a divine vision for Amazonian people. I call each and every one to be very inclusive. Tomorrow's talk show is wonderful. Because I will stop now to go for a meeting that can determine the result of tomorrow's talk show. The pigs are collecting. Make yourself comfortable that they are not collecting. It's your cup of tea. They are collecting. How can you be an hypocrite? If the thieves are not, if they are not collecting, then why do we cry embezzlement? How can somebody not collect and then you cry embezzlement? Or you want to please yourself? They are not collecting. They are not collecting money. And then later on, after one year or two years, you say they were embezzling. What are they embezzling that they didn't collect? We cannot be hypocrites of our own politics. The pigs are collecting. Whether you like it or not, they are collecting. 
but they are thieves. They are embezzlers. They collected, from what you can see from draft, the pigs collected more than five million from my trip to Buya. If, they, if a thief man can agree that he collect 1.3 million, thief man agree in public that he collect 1.3 million, and then he was arguing that no, it was eight point something, it was 800 and something thousand, it was 900,000. A thief is even arguing and saying that it was 900 and something thousand. A thief, without a simple, a simple bullet, without a simple gun, only going to kill other people. A thief accepted, but some people were telling me that they were not collecting when they were collecting. I know how the pig collect. How many emails they sent to you people that collected my that we are giving my trip to Boya? Every month they send you very conducive emails telling you how to thanking you, saying how you are wonderful, saying the president is what you didn't see that. And if you make yourself comfortable without learning how they collect, you will keep crying and you be one opposition like this in small corner. You have got to not hate somebody, but no understand that. You hate the people for what they do, but always look at what have they done to collect before they can embezzle. The difference between you is that you learn that strategy, collect, and you deliver. That, that makes way different. Let us not be comfortable to things that are not helping the nation and helping the vision. Let us not be comfortable. Be one person that is different in your faction for the collective good and the delivery of independence for Amazonian people. What I say here doesn't make sense. If I would be talking to some officials, they would talk cha 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 cha. They think that some people are idiot in the struggle. Some of us are chair people. We are chairman in our organizations. We are founders. We are successful people in our individual lives. We are not just surrogates. We come here to pour knowledge so our people we can deliver. And so when some of us talk and some people, you you how can we pigs have stolen money? We know. You only, on, uh, you only say yes, they stole money, but when they collect, you say they were not collecting. Are you not a hypocrite to yourself? Let us not kill the visions. Tomorrow's talk show is wonderful for Amazon people. Let us, we're going to say things that people sometimes we hate to hear, but collectively our people will like to hear those things. Because they are going to make us to spring ahead. If we collect 50,000, now what about collecting 100,000? You collect 100,000, what about collecting 200,000 and making good use of it? Imagine you see the rightful people who don't know how to steal. Because now this is the problem. Let me tell you people, I am an egg of sis. They don't know how to steal. They don't know how to collect. Period. Call me bastards. The ADM people cannot steal a single cobble. They don't know how to embezzle. They don't know how to embezzle funds. They don't thief. They know the thief. But they don't know how to collect. They do not know how to collect. Now me, these are the tell all of you that committed, have you seen mass emailing coming to you every week? How the Sakorian give emailing every week to people that committed? They are, are they sending you people mass emailing, beg, begging you for more funds? The egos you don't know how to collect. This is a fact. They don't know how to steal. They don't know how to steal. They don't know how to embezzle. But also they don't know how to collect. The pigs are big thieves. Big embezzlers, they know how to collect. They are like the Hoshi, Hoshi people, Poppy, or how they call this guy, this guy, where, being Nigeria, Instagram, Hoshi Poppy. That is how they pick, sir. They know how to collect. They can collect even the last drop in your. In fact, look, when you get $100, they ask you to commit a, a, a ticket for $500. They motivate you. When you get the $500, then they, they motivate you for a VIP ticket. When you give $1,000, then they motivate you for Seseku class, which is 2,500. The pigs will be motivating you from one step to another. When you pass the step that they told you, then they will say, you know, you have earned this. We want to increase your limit. Now you have one, uh, 500. Now you give a, a VIP, which is 1,000. And they will tell yes, you can. You are one of the people the nation rely upon. When you give 1,000, the pigs will now motivate you to give Seseku class. That imagine Seseku, our leader, who is seeing this, and then you will give 2,500. At the end of the day, the pigs are collected. But when some people come from the pigs and want us to listen to how they we are giving money to pigs, are you inclusive to listen to the people? We fight for the people. We must listen to the people. When some people who are disappointed to the pigs for stealing the money come to us and say, listen, this is the way these people were collecting money. 
You will say, ah, I was a pig, you don't want to listen. Be very inclusive. You are losers. You are losing. Learn how to collect. Learn how to collect. The pigs, we are not even having activists like we are today. But they call, they collect it. They collect it. They know how to collect. They collect. They know how to squeeze your bank account like this down. The problem for them is they are thieves and embezzlers. They will never put it to action. My brother, whether you like or not, this is a fact. Me, I'm not comfortable that they know how to collect. But it's a fact that they know how to collect. Simple. Speak the truth. Use your conscience. You will not miss your salvation. Salvation is personal. You will be judged. We love our leaders. Don't kill the vision of the leaders. The leader will also be judged. And you will be judged. And everyone will be judged. And the leader will be judged differently. And we shall be judged also individually. Can you do the right thing to serve the vision by accepting the truth? They collect, whether you like or not. Because if you say they don't collect during my trip to Boya, then after, after you'll be the one saying that they, they embezzled my trip to Boya. How can they embezzle what they didn't collect? People are collecting money in drafts. Very openly like this. Some people say they know they collect, saying a lie. Even if the lie said they don't collect 5 million, at least 1 million day for inside Angkwa. You way you know the lie, you don't collect even 500,000? No. You way you know the lie, you don't collect even 100,000? No. The problem is you. Learn how to collect. Because if you collect just 100,000, what you will do? I know Amazonian people, they will fly. Learn to collect. Collect it and use it the right way. Exactly. That is what I'm saying, my people. Is it a bad thing to, to, to learn how to collect? You must listen now to the people that are disappointed with pigs who emptied their bank account to pigs and they still want to give you $50, $100, $200. And they were giving $500 to the pig. They come to you and say, look, I give you $50 because you don't know how to motivate. I started giving $50 to the pigs. The pigs motivated me to be giving them $500. Can you now ask them what type of motivation they were giving them? No. You are like, no, no, they are lying. They don't collect. It's a lie. They don't collect. And finally, you who don't lie, do you collect? No. The problem is us. The problem is you. That is what I want to tell Amazonian people tomorrow in a different style so that you can understand. It is what it is. You're not going to be a CPDM style surrogate. No. We want the best. We want to win. We want more people, neutral people to join. But when neutral people see an institution with genuine people like me, the reputation that I have has to bring something in. You know I can't be corrupted. You know nobody can lie to me. You know I am a person who lives in the world, in my own world, where I know it has to be like this or nothing. It is an all or nothing phenomenon. You know that is who I am. And so, is the spirit I want all of us to be incorruptible. Think about the blood of our people. Think about the hard work that we have done collectively and what our leaders have done gone through torture protect that vision not like a sheep protect the vision like a baby make it grow bring changes if you can't bring a change to a good vision that change that will make the vision to move ahead then you are useless that is why i said my office as a deputy chairman for the national day is useless if you cannot bring anything new if you cannot change if we cannot bring inclusivity, if we cannot bring Amazonia from one step to another, it's useless. It is useless. It's only meaningful and use, useful when it serves the people. It's only meaningful and useful when it serves the same people for which I am standing. And in that, whether we are going to feel uncomfortable, we have to increase our contribution power. We have to increase the way we commit. We have to get new people on board. We have to listen to disappointed people who are disappointed from other factions that did not serve what they wanted. We have to ask them, Sir, Mama, Papa, how did you want it done? Mama, Papa, maybe if we do like this, you see the enemy will do this. Maybe we do but this. How do you think? We need to talk to our people like that. Respect them. Talk to them. Listen to them in the first place. Don't shut the people down. It is only your, your wounded that does that. If somebody continue to say something, one, two, three, four, you think those people don't have anything in their lives? It means there's a problem. Don't say there's no problem. If you say you are La Republic, you are Atanga Nipo. You might not be in his own world, you might not understand, but the fact that somebody, a human being, is leaving everything on earth and is saying something, it means there's a problem. Don't shut them down. It might be a test for you. 
It might be a test for your leadership. It might be a test for your skills. To know even if civilians go naughty tomorrow and come to protest for what they are not even right, are you going to kill them because they are not right? Are you going to shut them down because they are not right? It's a test to all of us today. Before I round up, I want to show you that ADF is not capable of doing and undoing. And for that reason, I want you to watch this video and see. Capo Daniel is going to be here. Capo Daniel will show you. ADF has created powerful, powerful, powerful items. And ADF can now take La Republic from horizontal, vertical, left, right, from up, bottom, or top. ADF is not capable of doing and undoing. Capo Daniel is giving you the update. Watch, share, and invite. Thank you, plenty. So now the video, then that way, the time where they be the test, the trigger me mechanism, it will work very well. When I don't see the same bomb, the way they be use this trigger mechanism, we'll get multiple trigger mechanism over four different type of trigger mechanism. Then I know we'll give details and because it's CB classified, we do another video on I see during the testing of the of the bombs, the technology that already be shared around will be shown as official. Um, even if they key all the people the way they be bring the technology. The other fight away, they are already transfer them. The technology, they are already keep them fine. So the other video I will show you now, now the video for the testing of the bomb itself. This one, I mini bomb of that bomb them. When I see the testing. I can get that so. For general big number. And the big number, I labor at that. When I see that so, I labor at that. When I a big number, I repair that. So those now the testing of our bombs in Ground Zero, we have successfully built bomb with material them all from Ground Zero will be capable now for use bomb and neutralize La Republic du Cameroon their armored car. They want a big big success for Ambazonia. We will call on our people them for invest heavily because going forward, Doctor Cho Ayaba Idan also agree. So we will invest now for these bombs them so we get our struggle for the next phase. We we'll don't use the bombs them even for urban area. We we'll don't use them all. We we'll don't be master on transporting this bomb. We we'll don't get people the way the people produce them for all the various states them, including non ADF groups them. We we'll don't do our patriotic duty. I will also want to make big announcement today for Gear for now. Say the bomb, the first gun. We are so now the video then that way the time where they be the test the trigger me mechanism. It work very well. We we'll don't see the same bomb the way they be use this trigger mechanism. We'll get multiple trigger mechanism over four different type of trigger mechanism then. I know we'll give details then because it's CB classified. We do another video on I see during the testing of the of the bombs. The technology that already be shared around will be shown as official. Um, even if they key all the people the way they be bring the technology, the other fight away they are we'll already transfer them. The technology it they already keep them fine. So the other video I will show you now, now the video for the testing of the bomb itself. This one I mini bomb of that bomb them. When I see the I testing, I can get that so for general big number. I get a big number in labor at that. When I see so in labor at that, when I get a big number, I repair that. So those now the testing of our bombs in Ground Zero. We have successfully built bomb with material them all from Ground Zero. Will be capable now for use bomb and neutralize La Republic du Cameroon, their armored car. They want a big, big success for Ambazonia. We will call on our people then for invest heavily because so going una, forward. I, I hope that Una now we want to watch. This is the type of thing that um, Una we want to watch. This is the type of thing that I want all of us to understand. You can now see. What they are capable of doing. Are you happy now? This is the type of accountability that ADF love to give out. But this accountability goes mostly to people who we are already understanding the issue of defense. But there are some people who don't really understand much. The name of AGOVC, ADF was, tam was tarnished a lot by some people. And so we need to go a little bit above and beyond to get people to understand it. Because the people are happy when ADF do this. Watch your screen. When ADF did this, you are happy. When they send this Nkunyam to Tazatan, you are happy. They send this Nkunyam to Tazatan, you are happy. They send this Nkunyam, that rape your children, 
This kunyam, they send to Tazat and that torture us. You are happy. You are happy for all this kunyam. You are happy for this, uh, this kunyam that are crying today. You are happy that this kunyam sent to Tazatan. You are happy that all these kunyam here are already to Tazatan. You are very, very happy that all these things, this kunyam here for Mamfe, it don't go for Tazatan. You are happy that this kunyam don't go for Tazatan. We are all happy about all these things. You are happy, say this kunyam for here, don't go for Tazatan. You are happy, this kunyam don't go Tazatan. You are happy for your leadership. You are happy for your leadership. You are happy for your leadership. Fellow brothers and sisters, let us face facts. Now you are happy, but the way that these things have been done is because some people commit, some people support, some people spare their bank account, their checks, their everything to make sure that this kunyam go to Tasata. Now you are happy. Somebody need to tell you in one way or the other to show you how we handle these things, maybe above and beyond. Some people cannot use their brain to just see the action and then say this accountability is good. Some people don't use their brain to understand that these things are not for free because some people are committed. Might be ADM is using only 10,000 a month for these things. Might be AD, AGOPC has been using only 20,000 every month for these things. What people who collected millions cannot do, ADM is not doing only with this amount of money. It is going to, all the good Samaritans now are going to be like, imagine ADF can do this with 10, 20, 20 10,000 only. We know that it's only 10,000 that they give to Ground Zero every month. We know, Dr. Chua Ayaba said it. Imagine now they do all this thing only with $10,000. What if you give them a million? This is a food for thought for everyone. I want to thank you all. Have a wonderful time. I have a meeting now. Please, I cannot continue. I see you guys tonight. I will come out tonight. But we have a program talk show tomorrow, 3 p.m. Amber time. Another talk show coming 3 p.m. Amber time on uh, Friday. That talk show will be to build and bind our unity and our national cohesion. Looking ahead of our National Day celebration. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. And then this was yours, Major General Vela. Bye.
Ayaba has been at the center fold of this struggle where it is today. I mean, if you took him out and you took his organization, the, 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 the Brazilian Defense Force, forces and the, the, the council is running, or they are running, frankly, this, this struggle would have ended. So it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, we're, we're breathing a new a group of people, Bo Herbert embarrasses me. I mean, that's somebody who should have known better and should have known the history of this struggle, that if you're dealing with a, a regime like the Paul Bia and the CPD of cohorts in Yaoundé, that is the, the, the only language they will understand any change to be impacted, you know, either on their own side of the, 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 the equation or on the southern Cameroon side of the equation, is 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 it's, it's, it's violence. This is a regime that breeds and links on violence. And without the armed struggle that uh, Dr. Choyaba has initiated, frankly speaking, the South, we will not be talking about uh, an Amazonian state today. That, that's a fact. I have seen novices, you know, I call you know, children who have just come in. These two gentlemen, I just feel sorry for Akwanda because both of them were on the right course. Both of them were on the right course. Even when the all Anglophone conferences were holding with Dr. Moon Tsubu, late, uh, 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 late Barrister Elad Kontame, so rest in peace, you know, and Carl, uh, Professor Carson Nanyangwe, who is here with us in South Africa, they were always, you know, they, they didn't take the course anyway. If you look at the AAC1, the AAC2, and so on, this revolution has taken the momentum and the courses has taken because of the self-defense uh, approach that Ayaba brought in. And a lot of them need to go back into Ayaba's history when it comes to revolutions. People like Sako Sako, I mean, it is an embarrassment to me that I find literate people, literate Amazonians hanging around Sako. Sako cannot do anything. That's somebody who cannot sweep the floor. Not to talk of leading a revolution of about 10 million people. If somebody who has no capacity, I have nothing against him. If he hears my voice, he will recognize who is speaking. Because like I say, when he came back from Nigeria, he was interacting with my media house. And I know him from beginning to and I just feel sorry that they've been able to mislead so many Southern Cameroonians, collect money from people, just use the money, misuse the money, and just keep leading people to the direction where they're leading. And Sako and Peter Mafane Musonget have got a very, very close relationship. My profession, I'm an investigative journalist, but I've been in the profession for over 30 years. So I know each and every one of them. Each and every one. I mean, Southern Cameroonians just think they can ever go anywhere with this revolution. And people cannot stand. Even what Cho Ayaba has done, Dr. Ayaba has done for all of these years, I owe him a lot, personally. You know, it's just to say thank you. I mean, it's nothing, I mean, all this, uh, this, this loud noise people make on social media, so it's not going to take us anywhere. I just feel sorry for Akwanda. Akwanda was on the right course. With partnership with Ayaba, they've come a long, 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 long way. From the 90s. From the 90s. These are the people who have kept the momentum. The AAC1, AAC2, and the rest, they brought nothing to this revolution. This, if the Southern Cameroonians can stand today and have hopes, that we're going to be independent one thing. It is thanks to these two people. I will not take out the credit that Akwanda is due because we can wipe off history. At one point, he was very, very active. You know, at the time, Cameroonian security was such a bunk that you can't go through. These two gentlemen were able to mobilize and still cause, you know, urban, I will call it the uh, urban guerrilla warfare. They initiated it. You know, attacking police stations in Bermuda or Shandam stations and so on. It was their initiative. It wasn't the initiative of all these people who sit on social media today. And talk. that's why I, I pity somebody like, like Bo Herbert. But when you look at Sako and Bo, they have a, they have a, a, a what would I call it? They have a particular responsibility of taking or make, making, pretending as they pretend in public. Sako is married to, to a Francophone lady. The boy Herbert is married to the Bamitika from the West Province. Do you think boy Herbert will be happy to see his children go back to the West Province and uh, uh, come to any Ambazonia or oh, wait a seat in his house the while pretending? I mean, these guys are just pretending in public. So I think any rich people serving Cameroonian, if he's not aligning behind the philosophy of the Petroyaba, they're wasting their time. Frankly speaking, they're wasting their time. 
So I'm just only trying to encourage you guys to see, you know, our generation and whoever is supposed to shift from that equation, it doesn't belong there. The circle is supposed to shift, they don't belong there. They belong to a generation that has failed Southern Cameroonians, including myself who is speaking, because there's none of us in that generation who was courageous enough to, 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 to stand the fall. But if you find people who have risen to the Sheikh Kavi and the rest, who can do what they've done today, frankly speaking, we should give them the kudos and focus on what they're trying to do to push people like okay. Eric. Me, can I jump in in that area? They, they don't even have direction. Sometimes when I watch him and I listen to him, I ask myself a lot of questions. Where, where does he stand? What does he want? Does he want to run a newspaper? Is he in, in a revolution? Where does he actually belong? So let, let people just calm down. Focus the group that has led us and sustained the momentum. The final thing I want to say is this revolution, so called the, 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 the opening of talks in Yaoundé. The gentleman who sits today as the director of the DJRE, that was a former Senate. It's a gentleman that I know from A to Z in my career as a journalist. I know him from A to Z. And I would say one thing, and mark what I'm saying today. If the regime of Paul Pia is opening a negotiations with our leaders, and they take out Shishiku and the others, and they put Eko Eko, who is the director of Sene, to open discussions with them, we should be very careful. There is no nation in the world, if you're going to start whatever political leverage in terms of negotiating for peace or whatever, and a, a group, they take out this, the chief of the intelligence of the country, because Eko Eko is, 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 is the intelligence unit of, of La Republique. If they take a, 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 I mean, to look at the composition of all of the people who sat with Sisuku, with, with Sisuku uh, uh, they were all from the military background. And 90% of them, when I look at their names, they were all trained as intelligence officers before even being, or after being in gendarme or whatever. But to take Echo Echo as the head of that discussion is to send a signal to Southern Cameroonians that it's not any negotiation. There is absolutely nothing that is going to come out of it. Look what I'm saying. There's nothing that's going to come out of it. The Republic has never, ever been truthful in any of its actions. They are currently very, very confused. And if there is anything the Southern Capital has needed to do now, is to keep the momentum. And I think it's the ADF that has kept this momentum up to this point. It's embarrassing that somebody will see he's heading a government like Sako. You cannot point to one armed group or as a other. And now let me correct also you, Vela, because you are not running a militia. You are actually running a, 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 a freedom or a liberation group. They're not running a militia because militia has a very negative connotation. But Sako has nothing on the ground to prove to collect how many million from seven thousand, and you can't put anything down. I mean, it's pure Thank madness you. for people to even listen to him speak. Like I say, one of these days I'm going to come out with a light up about him and all that those group of people. Somebody like I know, I know, is not even a journalist. He's not. I mean, I ran maybe uh, houses in that part of the country for so many years. These are people who are just running uh, 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 tracks called uh, newspapers. I mean, and, and I'm so, it astounds me when I see eight, nine, ten million brilliant Southern Cameroonians running behind people like this who sit on their armchairs in Washington, D.C. and Houston, and that they are causing all the havoc that they are causing. These are all agents. Banquish people, the bank people, the other day, and say, I know works for them. He's their teacher. You know, and which is true, I have proofs. I have proofs. So I have proofs, all of these people. So it is high time that Amazonians begin to think, do we want our freedom? Or do we want to begin to run around not, you know, pushing their political leaders? It's not even about an issue of politics, because they're not even politicians. Politicians don't say they do, I listen to Anna sometimes speak. So thank you very much.